A couple of years ago, a product called the Air Umbrella took the world by storm. The idea was a fan that created an umbrella above you. Of course, the product was a failure. You'd need a giant fan and a giant battery in order to do it. But what if there was another way? What if you used a more compact fuel? What if you used a jet engine? That is all coming up, but first, let's take a look at how we got here. If all went well, you just saw me demonstrating this project. If all didn't go well, I have no idea what you just saw and I'm probably talking for no reason. Right, let's talk about how we're going to build it. The first step is to take a look at how it works, which isn't that complicated. The theory behind an air umbrella is pretty simple. You have a shape kind of like this and you put a lot of air up this shaft, which then blows it out the sides through here. The idea is that that sideways air then pushes any rain to the side. In practice, it requires a lot of energy to do that, so it didn't work very well, but we're gonna try and do better. The first thing we need is an extremely powerful blower. So what I'm gonna do is come onto AliExpress and find the most powerful blower that's a reasonable price I can get. I think I've got a good candidate here. It's a 200 watt fan, which is not actually that much when I come to think about it, but it does say extremely powerful. So I'll buy that and we'll see what happens when it arrives. And we are back, and the fan is here. It's just a bit smaller than I was really expecting it to be, which is unfortunate, because it's probably not going to be as powerful as I thought. It seems to be an impeller design, so it should have a decent amount of power, but let's rig it up into a test thing. <laughs> get assembly. We are support free. Great, I've cracked it. Let's start again. Let's try that again, and hopefully this time, not snap it. That was much easier. I actually went back and changed the tolerances so it was easier to fit on. In order to power this, I'm going to be using a Dell power supply. And I'm just gonna leave the contacts out, so let's hope that it doesn't short circuit and kill me. Dell are actually really good for their power supply, so that's probably not gonna happen. I apologise for the decrease in video quality, but I'm using a GoPro so I don't ruin mine and my cameras. I got one of these jet spray things to test it out with. So I think I'm going to start on the mist setting. This, does this have a mist setting? Alright, watch this. Is that actually doing anything at all? Oh, I'm getting soaked. So it is doing something, look at that. You can see, some water is not hitting it. Albeit not very much of it. Great, that's a success. <laughs> Let's go check the slow-mo and see if it's any good at all. There is actually something happening in this footage. There is some water being blown away. enough and nowhere near powerful enough. 
so we've got to do better. My first thought is pretty simple. If I turn this the other way up, we'll suck the rain in and then it will have more momentum when it comes out because rain's heavier than air. So hopefully it'll be more effective. Is this waterproof? Who knows, but we're gonna find out. I'm not gonna find out that I can't pull this apart very easily. Ideally, I wanna jam it like that. Let's give it a go. I'm not gonna bother showing you the whole test because this was somehow even less effective than it was before. I believe the technical term for what that is, is an abject failure. I don't think that could have gone any worse. I guess it could have caught fire, but in terms of functionality, that was pretty poor. You're probably wondering why I didn't use a more powerful motor. And the answer to that is simple. 140 watts is pretty much the maximum power I can draw from a battery I can fit into the handle of an umbrella. So we need some other solution. We need something that stores more energy in the same space. Gas. Gas stores around 14 kilowatt hours per kilogram, which is a hell of a lot more than the around 0.3 kilowatt hours that lithium batteries store. So it sounds to me like what we need is gas. And in order for gas, what we need is a jet engine. You probably knew that because I had a intro and a title and a thumbnail, but I didn't. Anyway, let's check that out. The function of a jet engine is pretty simple. If we look at this two dimensional cross section, basically what happens is air comes in the front of the engine over here. And that air is then compressed through a compressor stage, which is basically a load of fans that allow the air to be squished so it's going really fast and at really high pressure. We then put that into a combustion chamber. Now the combustion chamber is much bigger than the intake where the fans go, which means the air becomes higher pressure and slows down according to Bernoulli's principle. In that, we have a load of stuff, most notably diffusers and the fuel injectors. And that allows us to maintain flame in here and that flame expands the gases and pushes them out the back at really high pressure. And at the back, we have a turbine, and that turbine spins round and gets driven by the gas that's being expanded in the combustion chamber, and in turn drives a shaft which spins the compressor. And so the process repeats. Some of the gas, however, gets past that turbine, and that's our thrust. Alrighty, let's get designing and simulating and designing and sim this is going to be a long process. I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's like midnight. It's the next day. So let's get into it. I've just realized I only had a 30 minute time lapse on. Anyway, I've done the design. I may be exhausted, but the design is here. Now, there are a number of different ways I could get this manufactured, but something I've always wanted to check out is 3D printing metal. So that's what I'm going to try and do for this. Luckily, PCBWay, who sponsored this video, have a 3D metal printing service. PCBWay has been an industry leader for a long time, but right now they're celebrating their 11th birthday, and that means they're giving away a lot of good deals. On the 11th birthday section of their website, you'll see loads of discounts on all of their services, as well as a lucky draw, which when I entered, I won some pretty cool prizes, which I might use in some upcoming projects. I guess all we gotta do now is wait a week or so until this arrives. This seems to be a high quality part, which is good, but it's also missing most of the internal components. That's not because PCBWay forgot to install them, that's because I've got to build it. So let's build it with a montage, Woo! The 
The only issue now is I somehow have to be able to start this because jet engines don't just start. You've got to spin them really fast, which is going to be hard. This might not be the best idea I've ever had, but we could use a power drill and hopefully we can get it started. Let's give it a try. Obviously, if anything went wrong, it would be quite dangerous, which is why I've used the well-respected technique of she'll be right. As you can see here, I've used the G-clamp. Let's actually test this though, because that's what you want to see, right? We do not have anything like enough speed. I hate it when my crappy bodge jobs don't work out. Luckily, I've come up with a plan. Remember our blower from earlier? That had a really decent motor in it. Well, I say decent, it was probably cheap and Chinese, but it span really fast. If I can hook that up to the shaft, well, then we're in business. The only issue is that means I'm going to have to build a whole system to hold that in place. Which means I guess I'm going to build a working prototype of this with a pole. Let's get working. I've waited till it's dark, so hopefully we get to see flames coming out the back and ideally everything's gonna go and it's gonna look really cool. And then it's gonna work as an umbrella, obviously. So let's test it out without further ado. Okay, who's ready for me to engage the throttle? In three, two, one. Shit, boys. The batteries are dead, and that's really annoying because I don't have a spare battery. So I'm just gonna hook it up to a car battery. Which went well. And my ESC's on fire. Wonderful. How has that happened? So why is it like so on fire? Hold on. Oh, the power's still going through it. This wasn't an isolated incident, and it took me many, many iterations to get this fully working. But finally. Unfortunately, like Icarus, I wanted to push everything too far, and I gave it too much gas, and internally, it just couldn't handle it. This test was going really well, and I thought it was going to work, and it almost did. But then I gave it more gas, because I wanted to have more thrust for when I tested it, to make sure it worked as an umbrella. And well, the compressor blades hit the edge. I guess I over revved it. And now it's missing two blades. Three blades? Three blades, because it smashed into the edge. This is actually the first time I've failed to do a project. And I think it's not going to be the last, but it is a bit disappointing that I didn't get to get this finished. If you would like to see me try this again, well, a uh, thousand likes on this video and I'll come back and attempt to put myself through this again. Otherwise, please subscribe and like the video, and I will see you guys next week.